jobs in the paper? Nothing. Nothing what me applied for, anyway. Well, we can't afford for you to be too proud. So what, you two are going out? Yeah, what's happened to the flash meal we booked for you? And paid for. I don't feel like going out anywhere. You've never missed a Valentine's night out together. Well, tonight will be a first, then, won't it? Don't start on at me. We booked this meal to give you the chance to get out together. With your brother sitting in jail. Some night out that'd be. Oh, look at them, the stand. They'd be the first to tell you to go out. Yeah, maybe, love. But with the way things are between me and your dad at the minute, there's no point in us trying to have a romantic dinner for two. We should just cancel, try and get your money back. Things are bad enough as they are with Luke being locked up. The last thing we need is you two at each other's throats all the time. It's not my fault we're in this state. Your father's the one to blame. So just boot him out, then? He's wearing you down, Mum. And if you go under, well, that's it. This family's finished. But anyway, we booked the meal to give you a chance to get a night out for yourself. You know, to just take the pressure off. Would be the first time we've missed in 20 years. Well, shall I go and tell him to get his glad rags on, then? Well, are you coming in tonight? Uh, no, I'm going to see me, Mum. At your dad's. All right. I see you recover from my hand like then. That's what I was going to see her about. Why well, has she done something she shouldn't have? No. Unlike Bev and your dad over Christmas. I know he slept with her. You were? Oh, don't come the innocent. I've told me all about it on the hen night. My mum's going to be devastated. Megan, you can't tell her that you to get married next week. It'll wreck everything. Your dad should have thought about that before he went and slept with Bev. You still worried about going out? Of course I am. And I can tell you are too. Yeah, but less than I was. I'm sure the boys said they'd be joining us later. But I'm sure Ryan is right. Luke would want us to go out, wouldn't he? Just to show people what we think about him being locked up while he's innocent. I hope so. I hope he won't think we don't care about him. I know. Now, well, Ryan will explain, Monty. You smell great. That's relief. I'd hate you'd have to go out with me if I was stinking. Well, you're perfume, I meant. I know. You haven't completely lost your sense of humour, have you? <laughs> we haven't had much to laugh about recently, have we? It's only a week since I was choking with smoke and half dead in hospital. My brain smothered in booze. Things will change. There you go. You should wear a tie more often. You look good. You look good yourself. Very good. We've always made an effort on Valentine's, haven't we? We're still together. We must have something going for us. Considering. Considering what? Ah, oh, considering the mess I've managed to make myself over the years. Joey, maybe I wouldn't love you so much if you were Mr. Perfect all the time. Maybe you'd love me a bit more if I was Mr. Perfect a bit of the time. I don't need to love you anymore. I love you enough as it is. What a couple of losers we are. I know, yeah. Valentine's Day and not even one car between us. All right, boys, I'll be in for my shift in a minute. I'm just going over to the garage for some cheery, all right? Oh, by the way, uh, did you get any Valentine's? Yeah, loads. What, a couple of toads like you? Well, you must be up for me yet. <laughs> oh, we never even got an invite to a party. I know, yeah, should we slit our wrists now? <laughs> all right. Put your chips, please. Same for me, thanks. So, um. Did you get any Valentine's? That's for us to know. Oh. I bet you got a party lined up in all, eh? Nice, sir. Only party back on my back, you know. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but you'll be going off to your own one, won't you? Yeah, we'll probably go to our meets. Yeah, well, if it's last, you can always come to ours. We'll get some extra ale in, you know, just in case, won't we? Uh, yeah. Any time after our fate, if you fancy it. Yeah, all right. It's out it, though. See you later. So if you all of a sudden turn into some cradle snatcher? Oh, go away. Did that fit them? For their age. Do you reckon they'll come? I hope so. It's our last chance. So what do you think? Go on. Is it a party? I don't know. We haven't got nowhere else to go, have we? We could always go down to Greenland. Oh, should we have a Joe? What about Marie's? She's not speaking to me. How come? She was about Sarah Luke in the paper, you know, being in jail. Well, that's soft, as if it's got anything to do with you. Well, she's a loser anyway. I know. So the way she throws herself at lads, I feel ashamed. I know. She's not a donkey if there was a bottle of Alky Lime in it for her. She's not a dog for the chewy. So what do you reckon to Tim and Leo's party then? Well, I can't go down to yours, and you can't come down to ours. Unless we want to start with World War Three. Should we go then? 
What about Jane Malcolm? She said she was having a party. I hardly know her. She's mad. I do biology with her. It'd be dead good. Yeah, go on, then. It's better than sit around in some side garage, isn't it? What's happening? I haven't told her. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to tell her. Well, the sooner you do it, the more chance they've got to get some of the money back that they shelled out. Don't try and make me feel guilty, so then I'll keep quiet. I didn't mean... I'm not worried about your dad losing money. I'm not worried about my mum marrying him. What? What's that look for? Well, I'm just wondering why you're really thinking of telling Auntie about our dad. Because he cheated on her. Oh, you think I want to split them up just because I don't get on with Ron? If Auntie finds out about Dad and Beth, She'll run a mile and that'll be it, won't it? She won't want to see him again and you won't have to either. What do you think I am? Some kind of spoiled kid? I'm only going to mess up my mum's life just so I can get my own way. If you say so. Yeah, I do. Megan, we're going to have to talk about this later. Look, I know it hasn't been a big emotional family reunion, but me wanting to tell me mum's got nothing to do with a big hate campaign against Ron. It's because he is my dad that I am, mum and Norton. Well, you're going to have to make your mind up before people start buying boxes of confetti. I know. I just don't know what to do for the best. Oh, Beanie, what are you doing? Get me these. All the girls club together and, well, we just wanted you to know we were all thinking about you. Oh, what are you telling thanks for me? It was a dead nice idea. Why don't you come out and tell me yourself? Oh, no, I didn't think so. Come on, they're only round the corner, knocking back the cheap promo lagers. No, honestly, I'm OK. Come on, just come out for an hour or so. I don't know if I fancy you. It'll do you good to get out for a change. I know. I just I don't want everyone whispering about me and pointing the finger. Look, we'll get a corner table, right? And we'll sit you with your back to the rest of the bar. No one will even suss at you. It would be really nice to get out. I'm climbing the walls, being stuck in here all the time. Go on. Oh, the girls said they were really hoping you come out. The dead keen see you and have a good gab. <laughs> So, are you glad you decided to come out now? I'll tell you in a couple of hours. Can we help you? Yeah, we booked a table for two. Well, my son did. No, my was. Yeah, I saw the book. Can we get you some drink? Uh, I'll have uh, double tonic, please. Lots of ice in there. How about you? Uh, I'll just have a bit of lemon, please. Why don't you have a beer? I can cope with watching you drink. A bit of lemon's fine. Uh, take your pick at the table. I'll get your drinks brought over to you. Cheers, thanks. There. See, uh, I suppose so far we're not being publicly harangued. We've got the whole night ahead of us yet. Do you reckon they'll come? Well, I'm going to look like a pair of losers. They don't, aren't we? <laughs> Give us a can, then. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I've got a bit of vodka for later on. What for? You know, just slipping the drinks, warm them up, and they get a bit too frigid. Hey, I don't need vodka to get a gale going. I just use my natural cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we'll see. Two bottles of pills, please. Yeah. Hey, listen, before I get your drinks, I don't know if you've noticed who's sat over there. Oh, great. I was just thinking maybe you'd want to change your mind and go somewhere else. What do you recommend? It's up to you. I need the lads in with them. No, it's just down to you. I don't mind going somewhere else if you like. Hey, I'm going for you. Hey, I'm going for you. I don't to say. The girls look well settled there. It's not the way I should have to go crawling off somewhere else. Two bottles of pills, then, yeah. Cheers, Mr. Cage. Just what we need. Take no notice. Don't let it spoil the meal. You OK? Just thinking about me mum and dad. <laughs> Stuff in their faces. No, I mean, the way things have been going for them lately. First the house, now our look. They've really been under pressure, haven't they? You think it's starting to get to them? Totally, yeah. And me. I hate seeing them at each other's throats. Your dad doesn't help, does he? <sighs> it always seems to make things worse. Did you mean that before, with me mum? About her booting them out? I meant it, yeah. <sighs> Do you think she would? <laughs> I know that she should. I don't know if she would. I mean, she's put up with him all these years. He's not always bad, though, is he? Are you really worried that she's going to boot him out? 
Well, he's my dad, isn't he? He's part of the family. Yeah, but he holds us back, Matt. He, he drags us down time after time. You always say things like that. I know you're older, you've known him for longer, but I haven't had the same rows with them that you have. You know what their real problem is? They love each other. So they're always willing to forgive each other, whatever goes down. Yeah, but they're really cut up about Luke. Yeah, they were up for hours talking about him being remanded last night. You know, I've never seen him so mad about anything. How can the police just do that? I'd lock him up for six weeks when he hasn't been found guilty of anything. It's off its head. That's a famous British justice for you. It's the way it works. British injustice, more like. Why can't they just let him out, eh? He's done nothing. We'll let him out one day. We just have to stand by him until they're forced to let him go. I, I don't know, and then we can sue him or something. I wonder what he's doing now, stuck in that cell. <laughs> He'll be getting a Valentine's kiss off a big airy prison officer. Must be a nightmare for him. Are we going to sit here crying, or are we going to go and have a pint for him to show him that we haven't forgotten about him? I don't know if I fancy going out tonight. Oh, come on. Anyway, we said we'd catch up with my mum and dad, and you don't want to disappoint them, do you? I suppose so. They have enough knockbacks as it is these days. Good lad. Get your gear on. You can get the first round in. It was the worst party I've ever been to. And the shows just... What's Jane's mum like? My mum's about mad if I would have had a load of me tram without telling her. I suppose we just have to go home instead. Excuse me, you're uh, Nikki's sister, aren't you? Uh, yeah. I'm one of her mates from uni. Do you know where she is? No, she's probably out with one of her mates. Or have we just gone round to Bar Brookie? Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, All right, then, I'll, uh, I'll try around there. Cheers, thanks. Shouldn't I have said that? What's the matter? I'm so worried for our Nicky at the moment. Sam, are we just going to go home then? We'll try that Tim and Leo's party. I don't really want to go round there. Oh, come on, I don't want to go home yet. No, me neither. Oh, it might be a laugh. Come in. See, I told you they'd come. So you finally decided to make it then, eh, girls? Cradle snatching. I don't think so. Be in here. <laughs> I wish I could afford to be paying for this meal instead of the boys. Sure, they wanted to pay. We've done enough for them over the years. I hate being out of work. I suppose there's no chance of you getting me a start in easy like. You were sacked from there once? Yeah, but that was at Mr. Carton's day. Yeah, well, these new owners are worse, you know that. What about you making some money with the boys in the band? <laughs> By the time we split it four ways, it wouldn't be worth having. And that's assuming we could get someone to pay us to play in the first place. I could always try busking if we get really desperate. I thought we already were really desperate. I don't want you to go mad, but uh, I've bought you something. Joey. <laughs> Love. It's kind of to say sorry. Sorry for anything in particular. Sorry, because I know the last thing you need these days is me screwing up time and time again. Things have been bad, Joey, but I've never stopped loving you, you know. I was just really desperate that you didn't hit us with any more bad news. Oh, I'm a lucky man, I know, to have you still standing by me. And I'm promising you now, I'll do everything I can to be the husband you deserve. <laughs> What's up? Who's arrived? It's that creepy Harvey. Oh, and he's seen us. Ah, oh, he's coming over. Don't panic. I make a good mind. Hiya. How are you all doing? Fine, thanks, Harvey. I'm having a girls' night out, as you can see. All right, nice one. Oh, if I'd have known, I'd put my lippy on, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna make a go for that, Kelly. Oh, if you like. So what do you reckon? Oh, don't ask me. Do you fancy Leo? He's all right. Why? Do you fancy Tim? I might do. There you go. It's gonna be a good night, this. to get them in, but, but I haven't shut me out last time I was here. All oh, right, for what? Oh, nothing, just silly misunderstanding as well. You be OK? Yeah, of course. Thanks for letting me talk to you. So, are you going to come back to uni soon? I haven't properly decided, yes. I think you should, you know. I mean, everyone understands what you've been through. 
Well, I'll be dead keen to have you get over it. Just like I am. Get over it by myself, OK? I'll just have a Coke, and he'll have the same. And uh, I'll have a white wine, if that's all right. Yeah, of course it is. Come give us Auntie Callie. Was Kelly all right when you left? Oh, yeah, she's gone round to one of her mates. She said she wouldn't be late. Good. Now you know it wasn't me that, you know, at the party. Do you want to go out for a drink sometime? Just as friends. I'm not really up to going out much at the moment, Harvey. You can understand that, can't you? Of course I can. You've been through a really tough experience. And I just want you to know that if there's anything you want, I'm there for you, yeah? Anything you need, just say. Have you seen who that Nicky's talking to? He was going round dealing gear at the New Year's party. So how come the police can't pin the rape on him instead of our Luke? I mean, there's more chance of him having spiked a drink than anyone. Prime suspect, isn't he? Who else? Slimy little toe rag. Right. The minute he's on his own, we're going to have him. Right. Do you want another top up there, Em? Eh, uh, no thanks. I've had enough. I know, yeah. I never know when I've had enough, me. Where's everyone else? Thought you said you were having a party tonight. We are. It only takes two to have a party, doesn't it? Kelly, do you fancy going back to ours for a coffee? Oh, go away, Em. Party's only just getting started, you know. Right, well, I'm going to get off then. My mum and dad will be back soon. Yeah, and I'll walk you home. Oh, I going round the back for a snog, are yes. I'll only walk you home, OK? Oh, well, looks like it's just the two of us now, eh? Do you want to top up? Yeah, go on. Not as good as our garage, though. <laughs> it's not bad. It's private. That's the main thing. I know what it must be doing to you, Ed, but I think you did the right thing not telling your mum. I just couldn't bring myself to tell her. Well, what she doesn't know won't hurt her, will it? But what about me? I just let her walk into a manager to a bunch you can't trust, do I? How do I know you won't be off two times not every five minutes? It won't. That once will be the end of it. I still really think I should tell her. <laughs> He hasn't said anything. I just can't handle being here. Well, what about your drink? I need to go home now. OK, no problem. Cool, let's go. Uh, while you're out. Hey, I told you, you're bad. Yeah, you did. Look, I'm sorry. Um, I won't do it again. I've learned my lesson. Yeah, well, I hope so, because I'll be keeping an eye on you. Understood? Oh, cheers, mate. Hey, I want a word with you. Come on, get after him. What are they up to now? Get into it, Matt. Get off me. What are I doing? Yeah, you're a dealer. We saw you at that party at New Year. Ah. Trying to sell you junk. The same night that girl got so called raped. Leave him alone, will you? Blaming us for spiking a drink. The busies, they haven't left me and my brothers alone since. Is that what you're trying to do again tonight, is it, eh? Drop her up. Is that why you're following her home so you can rape her again, you scumbag? <laughs> Leave him? Oh, no, no. I said leave him. Just leave him. What are you doing? Trying to kill him? Uh, come on. <coughs> leave her to a druggy lover boy. If she wants him, she can have him. Are you OK? Are you here? I'm all right, but I need to send me a kick. Do you want us to get you the taxi home? I'll be all right. Just go. Mm -hmm. Can I send the come back? Kelly. Oh, really, Kelly. Oh, get some of the kids yeah. Tim, got you some leftover chips. What's with all the candles? You're all religious all of a sudden. What's going on? Eh, uh, nothing. Hope you really mean nothing. Come on, Kelly. It's time to go. I'll walk it home. Come on. Walk it home? You're gonna have to carry her the state she's in. What's she been drinking? She's only had lager. Lager? How much? A bucket full? Yeah. Come on, Kelly, love. Come on, let's get you on your feet. Come on, love. Come on, that's it. Come on. What are you doing getting involved with a Musgrove? I didn't mean any harm. I knew you were stupid. I didn't know you had a death wish. Come on, Kelly, love. Stand up straight. You. Stay here. All right. 
So what was all that about? Nothing. Honest. Just sat there all night, watching them go through last-minute plans for the wedding. Just biting my tongue, not saying anything. Look, uh, do you want another drink while you're here? No, thanks. I'm going to meet some mate in town. I think you made the right decision, you know. Yeah, well, there's always tomorrow to tell her if we've got the bottle. See ya. Good night. Hope you had a nice night. Yeah. Hey, next time, don't go starting trouble on our doorstep, eh? He deserved a kick in, didn't he? And anyway, I thought this place had a policy on not serving drug dealers. He was already barred out. And it's our business who we serve or who we don't serve, OK? I'm sorry, Nick. That wasn't the kind of nice house I was thinking of for you. It's OK. You ain't to know I was going to turn out, were you? Poor Harvey. He was scared half to death. What about us? Going back there to help him out? We must be off our heads. I should never have let him start talking to you in the first place. No, that wasn't a problem. He was saying some quite sensible stuff, believe it or not. Like what? Oh, you know, just about me restarting at uni before I missed too much of me course. Oh, I see. So you'll take notice of him, but not me. That's why we got you to go out tonight. To try and get you to pick up your life where you left off. I just thought that being round home was the safest thing for me. Even after tonight? I'm sure it must be hard for you round here. I mean, everyone knows you. And they all know what happened. And worse than all, that half of them have all been suspects. It's mad, isn't it? Look, we'd all be dead proud of you if you came back to uni. It'd be like you've overcome something really horrendous. You know, like you were determined not to let the guy that did this to you ruin the rest of your life. How are you doing, Pet? You sick? Get her upstairs, love, quick. I'm sorry about this. Now you know why they have laws about drinking underage. How did she end up in that state? Well, obviously, they had a party while I was at work. You know what kids are like. Apparently, she had a can of strong lager and it must have gone straight to her head. Yeah, that'll do it. One strong lager? The state she's in? Well, some of that stuff's lethal. Well, Tim swears that's all she's had. And you trust his word? She could be drugged for all we know. Oh, come on, Niamh. I really don't think Tim would do anything like that. Are you trying to tell me he wouldn't mess around with drugs? This is the lad the police had in for drugs after the party at Christmas. She'll be all right. He lives in the house where that Nicky was drugged and then raped. Doesn't that add up to you? He's right there in your house under the police's nose. Well, my lads have all gone through hell accused of being rapists. Oh, come on. Tim's no rapist. I've had to say the same about my boys ever since it happened. If he's touched my sister, he's dead. I swear it. He hasn't. She's just a young kid having a reaction to a drop of ale, that's all. We all did that when we were teenagers. My sister's too off her face to have any idea what he's done to her. All I'm saying is... Oh, save it. You can tell it to the police. Next on four, friends, and a Phoebe massage uncovers more than the bare essentials. Trying to get them two girls drunk like that. I never got no one drunk, Sinbad. Honest. More by luck than judgment, though, lad. That was some strong lager that you were feeding them last night. I mean, even I'd have been on my back after a few of them. You only gave them one each? Yeah, and Emily never even drank hers. That's because she's got more sense after what happened to their Nicky in this house. I mean, they're just a couple of kids, for God's sake. I mean, how would you feel eh, if some lad tried it on like that with your sister? I never tried it on with Emily. I suppose you were just trying to hold Kelly's hand when I copped you at it last night. 
No, I was trying to help her. She said she felt sick. Because you got her drunk? It's not my fault she can't handle her ale. Come off it, soft lad. It wasn't anything to do with the ale, was it? Was it? What do you mean? I mean... This was the stuff that finished her off, wasn't it, hey? What did you do? Spike a drink? Slip a little bit into her ale when she wasn't looking? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't lie to me, lad. You know exactly what you tried to do to that girl, and so will the busies by now. Ryan Musgrove rang them last night when I was over there. So God knows what they've got in mind for you now. Hey, hey, what's all the noise about? This. I found it in the rubbish alongside the beer cans. So let them tell you that nothing went on here last night. Hiya. Hiya. Are you off to uni? Hey, yeah. I'm really going to give it a go this time. I've got to get my life back to normal sometime or other. Well, at least he's behind bars now, eh? Yeah, and I'm sorry for all, you know, the trouble and that. Eh, uh, that's no problems. It must have been tough not knowing who it was. Eh, uh, listen, anyway, I've got to get off, seeing as it's my dad's big day. Oh, yeah, my mum said to him, wish him good luck for me. Yeah, I will do. Same to you, eh? Yeah. I can't believe how nervous I am. So I'm not too late to pull out. I didn't get away from me a third time. I've waited too long for this. Hello. Hi. You not sent for the off, then? Just give us a couple more hours. We're going mad and having the full works, as it's my special day. Well, better make sure my dad's got a good crease in his jeans, don't I? We'd better get in there, otherwise you'll have half your makeup done and your rollers selling. Hey, Megan. Um, you haven't said anything to your mum about my dad and Bev, have you? You've seen what she's like. I'm going to look like a right cow spoiling things. Just give him a break, eh? He's not going to do something that stupid again. Too right, he's not. Because if I've got anything to do with it, he won't get the chance. That Jacqueline was just what the doctor ordered. Mm, looks like a condemned man at a hearty breakfast, then. Well, we can't have him sign the rest of his life away on an empty stomach, can we, Dad? I couldn't eat a thing when me and Christine got married. My stomach kept rumbling through the service. Maybe it was trying to tell you something. Yeah, I just wish I'd have listened. Would have saved us both a load of heartache. Oh, poor old Rachel. That rat really hates her. Yeah, well, that's not gonna happen to me at Anthea, I can tell you. Oh, gonna live happily ever after, are you? Too right we are. We've waited too long for this. Yeah, I know you have. Are you sure you don't mind me getting married again, love? Dad, I just want you to be happy. And if you love Anthea as much as I think you do, then I am made up she's gonna be my new stepmom. <laughs> you know, love, it isn't like Kelly to lie to us. No, I know. I mean, if she said she only had the one drink, she's telling us the truth. So my instincts were right last night, then. The O'Leary lad deliberately got her into that state. It had to be him. It's the oldest trick in the book. I bet the little scumbag had the evening all planned. She could have ended up in the same mess as Nicky Shadwick if Sinbad hadn't turned up when he did. Well, why else would he go to all that trouble? I just hope them coppers took it seriously when Ryan rang. So do you think the police will be questioning the O'Leary lad again about the rape after what happened to Kelly last night? Well, they'd be fools if they didn't, especially if it puts Luke in the clear. You feeling better, love? A bit, yeah. So, how do you fancy one of your dad's famous fry-ups, huh? No, thanks. I'll do myself a bit of toast later. Oh, well, I'll make you something nice when we get in from seeing Luke. I'm sorry about last night, Mum. Me too, love. I was just so worried about you. I swear I only had one drink. Hey, just don't put yourself in that position again, right? I won't. I promise. Right. I'd better get off to see your brother. Yeah. Give him me love and tell him I can't wait to see him again. Hey. We'll have them home before you know it. Do you reckon they'll let him out soon, then? Of course they will. Your brother's done nothing wrong, love. Remember that. <sighs> Dad, I've run your bath, but I get in quick before Josh sees them bubbles or you've got no chance. Hey, listen, any idea what's going on with Bev? How do you mean? Well, she's been in my bedroom for ages, getting herself ready. She's probably just giving you a clear run of things. Oh, 
I thought I'd the bevine I would love. I thought she'd be running around throwing things at me by now. Look, can you stop worrying and get yourself sorted? The taxi will be here in an hour. Don't worry, Michael. This is one event I am definitely not going to be late for. <laughs> My God, Bev. What are you doing now? You're nearly frightening the life out of me. Sorry, it's just, um... Josh wants to give you this little present before we get off. You're leaving? Well, only to go to the registry office, sir. Me and Josh don't want to get in your way. Shall I give Daddy his present now? Yeah, go on, son. Oh, thank you. Can I open it now? Building some, thank you very much. We thought you might need a little something to remember us by. It's great. Go and get your coat on, son. And then uh, we'll get out of your way. Are you sure you won't come to the wedding? But I hope you're happy, Ron. I mean that. I know, love. I'll see you. And you can stop in that flaming garage until every bit of mess is cleared up, all right? Wasn't the only one in there, you know. Yeah, more's the pity. Otherwise, little Kelly Musgrove would be over the road nursing a hangover. Come on, Leo, you're in this and all. Two minutes, or so. <sighs> Come on. Right, sit. <laughs> I want to know exactly what happened in the guys last night. Nothing, Dad. Honest. So what was this for, then? Oh, it's not mine. It's him, Gotti. He thought it'd be a laugh. You think messing with this stuff's funny? But it never did nothing. It was Tim. He bought some in Kelly's drink. What, he deliberately spiked her drink? Well, I told him not to, but he wouldn't listen. You better be telling me the truth, Leo. Oh, I am, Dad. I swear. I wouldn't pull a stunt like that. The night of the party. You said you were here all the time. Yeah, out there with Matt Musgrove. And Tim was never out of your sight? No, except for when he come in, free fills and that. You told the police that? No, I never thought. He was only gone a few minutes. Yeah, and that's all it took. To do what? Drop a tablet into Nicky's drink. You sure this is not over the top? And you don't want to look like mutton dressed as lamb. You're not great. As long as Ron thinks so. Of course, he really loves you, doesn't he? You'd better, now we've reached this stage. <laughs> Come on, Mum. No turning back now. About time you were getting ready, isn't it? There's no rush. Me and Ron have got the rest of our lives ahead of us. Oh, do you reckon, love? Cos, uh, as I was saying to your daughter on your head night, you don't want to be taking any chances your time of life. Well, I don't reckon it's much of a risk, seeing that Ron's desperate to marry you. So put your claws away, cos it looks like the best woman's won. Flaming vodka, eh? No wonder the kid was so legless. How could the pair of them be so stupid? Our Leo swears that had nothing to do with them. Yeah, but he knew what was going on in there. Why couldn't he come and tell one of us? Not easy grassing on a mace, is it? No, I suppose not. And at least it got Emily Shadwick home before things went too far. Hmm. Tell you what, if Greg and Maggie get wind of this, then Tim really will be right up to his neck in it. <laughs> too nice, I know. After what happened to Nicky Shadwick in here. That's why I'm going to tell the busies what he was up to last night. Hey, hang on, Mick. The other day, you just stood there while Greg and Jason wrecked the Musgroves because you thought their Luke had done it, and now you want to wreck Tim's life. Sin, he spiked a drink. Now, you know what he had in mind, the same as I do. All right, he might be a bit of a dickhead, but there's no way he's some twisted little perv. I'm going to ring the busies and let them decide. <sighs> Dad, it's the busies. They've come for Tim. Joey, is our son really in there? Come on, love. He'll be waiting for us. Wes? 
Just a minute, mate. Right, <laughs> there you go. Now you really look the part. Oh, I just don't want to let my dad down. He's that thrills with himself, you know. Oh, I know. They're dead sweet. Make a lovely couple, don't they? I'm just made up he's met someone who makes him really happy. Have you seen the spray might bought me? Calm down, will ya? It's there on the drainer. Anyone think it was the two of you getting hitched? Oh, Mike's really smitten, you know. Yeah, well, me too. But don't you dare let on that said anything. Hiya. 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 Is your mum ready then? Just about. Oh, where's my camera? Oh, there it is. Are you okay? Come on then, Anthea. Oh, you look oh. gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Really lovely. Oh, my dad is going to be over the moon when you turn up at that registry office. Thanks, love. We're going to be happy together, you know that, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. <laughs> you look knockout. <laughs> How old are you? Uh, uh, mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. My dad said to come and get you because the cab will be here any minute. Oh, just one more thing before we go. There you go. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> you okay? Yeah, of course. I could get used to this. Me too. Hey, you better warn your dad. <laughs> well, I just want to say welcome to the family because you're the best thing that's happened to me dad in years. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. 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 <laughs> Them then or what? I don't know. Not nothing too good though, is it? But it was only meant to be a bit of a laugh. He's not laughing much now though, is he? You should have known better than to pull a stunt like that. I thought the pair of you had learned your lesson after the last time you tried to do some entertaining in ours. I did. I swear none of this was down to me. Yeah, well, let's hope you make tells the busies, I don't know. It's gonna be alright, isn't it? But I didn't even do anything. I'll tell them Simba, I'll tell them I didn't do anything. Just take it easy, mate. Oh, but we're just having a laugh. I didn't even do anything. She felt sick. Oh, come on, mate, tell them. Just keep out of it, OK? Did they arrest him or what? Just taking them in for questioning. What's going to happen to him, then? I don't know. I suppose I'd better go down there with him and find out. Turning up here separately. It's called tradition, Jacqueline. Yeah, but nobody bothers about that stuff anymore. Hey, you may mock them, but as far as I'm concerned, the old ways are still the best. Right, come on then, that's one of the three years. Better make it a good one, seeing as it's its last one as a free man. <laughs> right, say sex. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see you there. I'm big enough. Well, so my Auntie Auntie is always telling me. Oh, so your nephew the bride? Her cousin's son, actually. Not quite sure what that makes me. Funny how nervous you get, isn't it? Oh, you'll be all right. <laughs> Good day, mate. If she turns up. <laughs> you all right, Rich? Yeah, I've been here since, you know, just a few bad memories. I'll have to see if you can't chase them away for you tonight. I wonder what our Tony would have made of all this. Oh, he'd have been made up for you, Dad. The same as the rest of us. And anyway, you deserve a bit of happiness. It's been a lonely old time since me and Bev split up. Yeah, but that is all over with now. Because I reckon you and Anthea have a lot of good years ahead of you. Are you ready for the off then, Pops? I have never felt more ready for anything in my life, Michael. <laughs> Madam? Why, thank you, sir. Josh, we're going out. We've got 
the visiting order. It says I can see my son and all we've got. Sorry. Tell him, Joey. I think you're wasting your breath, love. He's blind and deaf as well as dumb. If there's some kind of security instant in there, how do I know Luke's all right? He doesn't give a toss. At least give this to him. Please, at least. He's waiting for us. It's been a week. Come on now. He'll know we've tried to get in. I need to see him, love. I want to know he's all right. He'll be okay. He's a big, strong man, Luke. And as soon as this comes to court, he'll be out of there. Okay? Just leave it on my desk, okay? Right, Timothy. I think me and you need a little chat. Where the heck has she got to? You did sort a taxi, didn't you? Yes. Now, will you give her a break? It is a wedding day, remember? Oh, my poor dad, he looks dead nervous. Yeah, well, it's a big step, you know, committing yourself to someone like this. Yeah, but I reckon my dad knows what he's doing. Yeah, well, I hope so, Jack, because getting married's easy. It's finding the courage to escape it when it goes wrong. That's the hard part. My nerves are in shreds here, I can tell you. You have got the rings, haven't you, son? Safe and sound. No, stop panicking, will you? My legal secretary. I can soon won't have to wash myself with you. You went not too carefully, I hope. Mm. Hi, hi, pops. Looks like we're on. Thank God for that. Right then, love. Wish me luck. Just a minute, Mum. What is it, love? Just wanted to make sure you're sure about this. I've never been more sure of anything in my life. Chance, Pops. Forget it, son. Right, love. You ready? You bet. Tried it on before, have you, lad? A drop of the hard stuff in your girlfriend's drink works wonders, eh? She's not my girlfriend. Yeah. Shame about that. Because you fancied her, didn't you, Tim? Sort of. Knocked your back, did she? No. Hurt the old pride, did she, lad? So you thought you'd do something about it? Get her in the mood? I didn't do anything. With a drop of vodka? We were just having a laugh, the both of us. But I wouldn't... I wouldn't do something like that. Like what, Tim? Undress her? Touch her? Yeah. Get her senseless so you could have sex with her? No. While she's lying there, helpless? I never. Is that what you planned, eh? No! Just like the night of the party when Nicky Shadwick got raped. to welcome you here today to celebrate the joining together of Anthea Sarah Brindley and Ronald William Dixon in marriage. This place in which we're gathered has been duly sanctioned for the celebration of marriage. What the hell Before is she you doing here? matrimony, I have to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows you're about to make. Marriage according to the law of this country is the union of one man and one woman voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of all others. For Ron and Anthea, the journey into marriage is merely the starting place for their love. For the real purpose of marriage is that you may always love, care and support each other through all the sorrows of life. And that love may be fulfilled in a relationship of permanent and continuing commitment. And we trust that these things may come true for you both. Yes. Yeah. If there is any person here who knows of any lawful impediment why these two people should not be married, they should declare it now. 
Stop it now, please. I can't let you do it, Mum. I won't let you marry him. What? He's a liar and he's a cheat. Yeah. I can know. And if you don't believe me, then, then ask her. Oh, yeah. It wasn't me, I swear. Please. I didn't do it. You just have got to believe me. I don't understand. Mum, are you all right? And you can shut up and all. Anthea, love, please, you've got to believe me. It was just a one-off. Could you, Ron? I thought you loved me. Of course I do. Oh, come on, love. You know you're the only woman I've ever really loved. I know you've hurt and humiliated me. Made a fool of me with that... that cow. And as for you... Hey, who are you calling a cow? Oh, for God's sake, Bev. Oh, yeah, just do one, will you? It's not my fault if your dad still fancies me. Well, you're welcome to him. Cos I never want to see you again. <laughs> And I hope you'll both be very happy. Nice one, Pops. <sighs> you asked for it, Dad. Come on. Let's get you home, eh? And you ignore what they were saying. Because me and Josh are going to look after you now. Aren't we, son? I know your type, O'Leary. Anything for a quick fix, the least line of resistance. I didn't do it. Look, in the Musgrove girls drinking a tablet for Nicky Shadwick, eh? I never. That desperate to get your leg over, were you? That pathetic you needed a bit of help to get things going? You've got it all wrong. Have I now? Why are you saying all this when you know exactly who it is? All I know is that Nicky Shadwick was drugged at that party and raped. Yeah, by that Luke Musgrove? And all other parties who were present in the Johnson house that night. How do you mean? You know exactly what I'm getting at. I don't, honest. Then I'll spell it out for you, shall I? I think the Shadwick girl was raped by more than one man, and I reckon you know more than you're letting on. So me and you are going to sit here until I find out what that is. Tim's Nightmare continues tomorrow at 8 o'clock. Coming up next tonight, a history of hanky-panky, repression, revolution, and plenty of nudge-nudge, wink-wink. Carry on snogging, here on 4. Excuse me. Do you know why they've called me back in? Only it's just that I told them everything I know yesterday. Right, Tim. I'd like to ask you some questions about the night of the 23rd of December, 98. I told the fella yesterday. I don't know nothing about what happened to Nicky Shadwick. Right. Well, now I'd like you to tell me. she'll want to see. I bet you she's in bits after what's happened. She's not the only one. I've got to talk to her. Well, I don't know what you think you're going to say to make everything go right again. If I was you, I'd give her some space and let her get her head together. 
And I'm surprised you're still here. I mean, don't you think you've done enough damage? Me? I haven't done anything. Oh, not much. Uh, what have I done? It wasn't me who forced him to sleep with me. Quite the opposite of fact. Anthea, love, I know you're forward. annoyed with me. Him? I don't want to know, thank you very much. And it wasn't me who told but Anthea, was it? Away, that precious not just little like daughter that. of hers. Yeah, but you were going to say something, problem, weren't you? Please. Megan just saved you the job, that's all. Listen, Prove no it. matter what you think of me now. Flaming hell! The tape's run out. What am I going to do without it, Jack? I'd a narrow escape, if you ask me. Dad, I don't know. I mean, you were so right for each other. And now you've chucked all that away. And for what? How quickly things change. When I got up yesterday, I felt so happy. Me and Ron going to be together at last, planning our future. Thinking how lovely it would be to spend the last years of my life with a man I'd always loved. I still can't believe what happened. I feel terrible. I know I've ruined everything for you. But I was frantic. I didn't know what to do. I just can't understand why you waited till the wedding to blurt it all out. It was bad enough I had to hear it from you anyway, but to tell me in front of all those people... I'm sorry, Mum. I'm really sorry. I should have just kept it quiet. You don't know knew what he was like. I mean, all those years ago, he two times his pregnant wife to be with you. Then he went off with Bev when his wife was ill. Then he two times Bev with some neighbour. I'm not stupid. I know he's no saint. Mum's got a problem. He can't keep it on his trousers. He's not all bad, Megan. So what are you going to do then? Just forgive and forget? Turn into one of those women who knows her husband's up to all kinds but just pretends not to notice? I honestly thought he'd changed. I thought he'd loved me like I loved him. Now, I just don't know what to think. I made it. I was afraid you would have gone in by now. Uh, there was a delay. I, I thought you weren't coming. I couldn't let my lad down. He needs to see some familiar faces when he stands up in court. What not you tell the boss? Too thick. I don't think he believed me. I'm so glad you've come. I'm sure Luke will be so pleased to see you. I can't wait to see him, love. I couldn't believe it the other day when they turned us away from prison. It's been over a week now since I've seen his face. I've really missed him. Yeah, so have we all. Never mind, love, huh? You never know, he might get bailed today. Sure. For all we know, he may be home in time for his tea. Would you like to come through, please? Ah, here we go, girl. Fingers crossed, huh? So are you saying you're not the sort of man who would spike someone's drink? Yeah, no, no. But you've already admitted you spiked Kelly's drink. Yeah, but that was only a joke. Did it start as a joke when you put that tablet in Nicky's drink? I didn't. You did it as a joke and the others egged you on. Others? What others? There weren't any others. So you were alone with Nicky? No, please, look, you've got to believe me. I didn't do anything honest. The fact is, Tim, I don't believe you. It's all too much of a coincidence. Right. Let's start again. Hello, Anthea, is that you? Oh, uh, hello, Mrs. Harrington, how are you? You're ringing him out, Beverly. Oh, yes. What's she done now? Well, we aim to please. Hi, Lil. Oh, don't mention it, love. I tell you, any time you need me, just give me a ring. I'll be round with me feather duster, no problem. <laughs> oh, cheers, love. All the best. How'd you manage to wheedle your way in with her? She's a right stuck-up piece, that one. Not when you get to know her, eh? And don't forget, I've seen under a bed. You wouldn't believe the muck under there. You did well getting in there, good books, I tell you. She owns all kinds of businesses, you know. If we get in with her, we could end up with a massive contract. Very lucrative. You know, you've got a great little business here, Ron. Me and you could really build on it. We could make a fortune. Ah, uh, yeah, but you won't be around much longer, will you? I mean, surely now you've got Josh back, you'd be thinking of moving on, finding a home of your own, like. That was when you were getting married. Now it's all off. There's no need for us to go anywhere, is there? No. I'm very happy staying here with you, thank you very much. Seems to me you don't get that many chances in this life. I've met loads of people over the years. 
Yeah, when I think of how many of them I really deeply care about, it doesn't add up to that much. You've got loads of friends. You seem to get on with most people. Yeah, I can get on with anyone at a level. But how many of them do I really connect with? Not many. Me and Ron were childhood sweethearts. Then when we met up again at Bird's Eye, everything just fell into place somehow. It was like we really gelled. I'd have married him like that if he'd have asked me. He was already married with two kids and a third on the way. Yeah, and that's another thing. I used to think anyone who went with a married man was the lowest of the low. Then it happened to me. I used to convince myself it was me he should have been with. Him and Dee weren't getting on at all, and his home life was hell. Don't tell me his wife didn't understand him. He didn't have to spin any lines for me. I'd already fallen for him in a big way. I'd have convinced myself of anything if it meant I could be with him. It's not like you had it bad. Just a bit. Then when I bumped into him again, I just couldn't believe me luck. It was just like fate somehow. And even though all those years had passed, it was like nothing had changed. I still felt exactly the same way about him. I loved him. And to be honest, I think I still do. So you're gonna go back to him then? Would you be really disappointed in me if I did? This isn't about me, Mum. It's for you and to sort out. I know, but I suppose it'd be too much to ask you to give you blessing. I honestly didn't think you felt this deeply about him. When you talk about him, it's like he's some sort of soulmate or something. That's how it feels. You've got to do what's right for you. It's like you say, you don't get many chances. Tell you what, then, if I were you, I'd go right back to the beginning. How do you mean? Well, take it easy. Have a real old-fashioned courtship. Go out together. Spend time getting to know each other properly. You've got an old head on your shoulders. How come you've got all the answers, a bit of a girl like you? Because my mum brought me up right that way. <laughs> Family support officer. Oh, hello, Diane. Look, I'm sorry you can't talk. I'm on my way to a meeting. You're going to see our Nicky? Like now? Right, I'll go straight there. <sighs> Greg, what's the point of having a mobile phone? It's never switched on. The defence would like to put it to you, Your Worships, that the prosecution are merely clutching at straws. They have only the barest of circumstantial evidence against my client, and it is with this in mind that we would like to make an appeal for bail. Mr Musgrove will be happy to agree to any conditions which the court sees fit. If Your Worships please, Mr Musgrove is willing to stay in a bail hostel, or he can stay with a member of his family living out of the area where he will cooperate with any request for him to visit the local police station. Aye, aye. Looked off early. But you're supposed to be in some meeting. I've been trying to get you on your mobile thing. What have you got it switched off for? The battery's gone down and needs charging. What's she doing here? What's going on? I don't know. She said she needs to speak to our Nick. He wants us to be there. Hello, Greg. Margie, thanks for getting here so promptly. Is this about that Musgrove? Have you finally got a confession out of him? That's not why I'm here, no. I'm afraid I've got some disturbing news. Let's go inside the house and talk, shall we? Hi, Nicky. What's happened? Let's go inside and talk. What the hell's going on? Well, it doesn't look like good news. And I'm telling you now, Greg, you better not kick off this time. For once in your life, just think before you speak. So what's happened now? I wanted to let you know that we've taken someone else in for questioning. But I'm sure it was Luke Musgrove. I saw him in the flashback. I saw his face dead clearly. I've told you all this before. All right, Nick. Who is it? Who've you arrested now? He's not actually under arrest. We're just talking to him at the moment. You know I'm not allowed to tell you who it is. How come you brought this other one in? Have you got your new evidence? There are some similarities in an incident that occurred recently involving this man and what happened to Nicky. 
Put a swear on the Bible it was Luke Musgrove. I'm even having nightmares about him. And he's still in custody, so he's still being treated as our prime suspect. But we've got to look at other possibilities. Have you remembered anything else? Any more thoughts or feelings about what may have happened to you? No, nothing. Right. Why, I mean, why are you asking? I'm just saying we've got to look at all the possibilities. Are you saying there might have been more than one of them? Oh, my God. Sorry to have kept you. I'm sorry we didn't get the result we wanted today. Well, I must admit we did half expect him to be coming home with us tonight, but there you go. How's he bearing up? He looked devastated when the magistrate said he couldn't come out. He's doing okay under the circumstances. Obviously, it's not easy for him. But he sends his love to you both. So, uh, what happens now? The prosecution have so little evidence, they haven't got a hope of getting this to court. Well, they'll have to face it, but eventually, then the case will be thrown out. But in the meantime, he has to stay locked up in jail. With him an innocent man, it can't be right. You need a good barrister. Well, I can instruct someone for you. Oh, thanks, that'd be great. Consider it done. Right. I'd better get out of here. I'll be in touch. Thanks very much for all you're doing for him. No problem. Don't worry. We'll get him home to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, thanks. He didn't seem too worried, did he? It's not his son locked up under false pretenses. Yeah, still, he seemed to think everything would be OK. I'm sure he wouldn't say it if he didn't believe it. True. Well, we'll just have to take his advice, won't we? And sit it out. You feel any better, love? Do you feel ready to go on? Diana, I wish there was more I could tell you, but there just isn't. My head's all over the place. I don't know what to think anymore. We'll call it a day soon, then, and give you a bit of peace, eh? Can you remember any groups of lads hanging around together at the party? It's like I said before. I saw Tim and Leo with Matt Musgrove. But there were other lads, but I didn't know them. No one really knew them. They were just gate crashes. Are you all right, love? Stupid question, or could you be all right? I know you don't believe me, but I'm telling you, you will get over this. Okay, you heard what Diane said, and we've got to be brave for all Nikki. This is about her, about how she feels, not how we feel. And it's our job to be there to support her. <sighs> all she needs us right now more than ever. We can sort ourselves out later. I know, but what can I do? What can I actually do? Right. We'll leave it there for today. You've been through enough for one day. You've done really well. I know I've said this before, and you're probably sick of hearing it, but if you remember anything else, even if it seems really trivial, please do give me or DS Rose a call, won't you? OK, please get in touch with me. Well, Anthea wasn't in. Or if she was in, she wasn't answering the door. Don't know why you're bothering. All this is down to you, you know. Everything was going brilliantly till you swam back into my life. It was fate, Mum. Can't you see that? The two of us bumping into each other, it was meant to be. How'd you work that one out? And it was fate, Anthea finding out what we were up to. I mean, I didn't tell her, you didn't tell her. It was fate. Oh, really? And here's me thinking it was Megan. Look, everything will be OK now. Me, you and Josh back together again. But we're not back together again, are we? Look, Bev, I told you you could stay here till you got Josh back. You've got him back now, so it's time you started thinking about your future. But our future's here with you. I won't just chuck it out in the streets. Ron, we were great together. It'd be such a waste to chuck all that away. Look, remember the day the social worker came round? Well, it was brilliant. It was just like old times. What are you talking about? It was a farce. The whole thing was a farce. We were play-acting all the time. Ron, I love you. You know I do. I love you. We were dead happy together. I know we can be again. Bev, will you grow up? 
You're living in a flaming dream world. It's Anthea I love. And if I can't have her, I don't want no one. Hey, time you started using this a bit more. You're 18 years of age. If you want to start being responsible for your actions, I don't know what to do with you. I mean, when everything seems to be going well, you just want to press the self-destruct button. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, do you want to spend the rest of your life making people think that you're a prized plant pot? I've said I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, it's not me you're going to have to apologise to, is it? I've got nothing to say to her. All right, Marg. All right, then. Tim wants a word. No, don't. We've just been down the police station and he's totally in the clear, there's no doubt about it. Sorry, Sam, I'm not with you. I know it sounds bad after everything that's happened. Soft lad here spiking someone's drink. You're the person Diane Nichols was telling us about? Yeah, but it's not in the way that you're thinking. It wasn't drugs or anything dodgy like that. Yeah, it was only vodka. Only vodka? Oh, well, that's all right then, isn't it? Is that what you have to do to all the girls, eh? You're so inadequate that you'd have to have them doped up. Look, nothing happened, honest. I sure, Emily. What's all Emily got to do with all this? Look, Mag, this all sounds worse than it actually is. See, the lads, Leo and Tim, they had Kelly and Emily round the other night, and Kelly had a little bit too much to drink, and she passed out. And where was our Emily when all this was going on? Leo was walking her home. Ask Emily, she'll tell you. Look, Mag, I'm sorry I thought you knew. Otherwise, we wouldn't have said anything. I realise we've only made matters worse. You're too right, you have. Cos I'm telling you now, you have not heard the last of this. I'm sorry we argued before. I know I go on a bit, but it's only because I care about you. Yeah. And uh, I shouldn't have been so insensitive about you and Anthea. I know you're still upset over it. Look, I was taking things for granted. I had no right to assume anything, but you know I get carried away over things. <laughs> well, I've been really happy being here the last few weeks, Ron. Been like old times. I haven't been this happy for ages. But it's not like the old days, is it, Bev? We've moved on now. We're both different people. Look, I know you're not ready to jump into some relationship with me, but I just want to tell you that's fine. Well, that's good. And I'm glad. And you never know, we might even end up mates. You've been a good friend to me, Ron. For taking me and Josh into your house and into your life. If it wasn't for you, I don't know where we'd be now. Well, I couldn't just walk away and leave you, could I? Not the mess you were in. You big softy. <laughs> well, now it's my turn to take care of you. I'm going to keep the house nice, cook you good, nutritious meals, take over as manager of Great Grannies, make sure you don't overexert yourself. No, Beth. Well, there's no way I'm leaving you now. I mean, what happens if your heart conks out? I'm not having that on my conscience. Look, love, I appreciate what you're saying, but you can't make a decision like that on your own. I already have. I'm going to do everything I can to take proper care of you. Yeah, but I'm set in me ways. I need to live on my own. Are you going to shack up with the other one? Bev, you're not listening to me, are you, love? I don't want you here. Ron, you're a very sick man. You can't live on your own. That's all there is to it. I'm not sick. Ron, your heart can conk out at any minute. There's nothing wrong with me, Bev. I made it all up. Were you at the hospital? Yes, I know. I went to the hospital. I went for my regular checkup. And I don't need anybody taking care of me. I'm absolutely fine. I'm fighting fit. So, you mean you pretended to be sick to get rid of me? Well, your heart might be okay, but I'm telling you one thing you're sick in the head. Hiya. I've been looking for you. I called in at the club, but the zone said you've nipped off early. Yeah, well, I needed a break. Look, I'm sorry about what happened yesterday. To be honest, it's your mum that I feel most sorry for. Me too. I should have told her sooner, I know. But I just didn't know what to do. Look, me and all Mike knew. But we weren't just covering up for me dad. He knew he'd been stupid. And he thinks the world's your mum. I mean, we didn't want to ruin their futures together because of one stupid mistake. But I couldn't just stand there and watch it go ahead. I mean, the whole marriage was being based on a lie. I want better than that for me, Mum. Look, I know this will sound like I'm making excuses for him, but I honestly don't think he's done it if it's been anyone but Bev. She's a manipulative cow, that one. She put the moves on him, and that was that. He could have said no. Get real. He's a fella, isn't he? 
Bet you both made up with me. Left away clear for her now. Well, she's still on the prowl. I called round there this afternoon and she was a phone and all over. He really does love her, you know. I think the sun shines out of her. Despite everything, she sort of feels the same way about him. Can't understand it myself. I mean, if a fella did that to me, I'd have his dude yours in a jar. <laughs> yeah, same here. I don't know. Parents, who's having me? I'll drink to that. Come on, I'll cheat you a stiff one. <laughs> Nikki, get in the house. Well, come with me, then. This isn't going to solve anything. Oh, come on, she's right. I should have known that little scumbag would be involved. He's been up to all kinds, fighting and thieving. That doesn't make him a rapist. Why the hell are you defending him? Ah, Nikki was drugged and attacked in that house. It doesn't take a genius to see he was involved. Look, I know it's frustrating, but, you know, we can't deal with it. Leave it to the police. Thank God Leo was there. At least he had the sense to bring Emily home. What would have happened if he wasn't there, eh? And that scumbag would have got a grip of air as well. Dad, please! Get in the house! Oh, there was no need for that. I'm sick of talking, that's all we ever do, talk about it. Our daughter was gang-raped. Musgrove did it, now we find this piece of filth in on her as well. It's about time somebody did something. Oh, yeah? Oh, that's just typical of you. Something goes wrong and you have to be the big man. Wade's in there with your fist playing. Don't open the door! <laughs> Well, I hope so, because you've made everybody else feel ten times worse. <laughs> you should be over there with our Nikki, listening to her, supporting her through a living nightmare. I'm sorry. If you've been affected by rape, whatever the circumstances, there's a Channel 4 information line with sources of support, including specific help for victims of drug rape. The number to call is 08 456 102 288. Lines are open from now until the 20th of March and calls will cost no more than 20 pence. That's 08 456 102 288. I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, I'm just taking him to the dentist and then we're going into town. I think we need to talk, don't you? Well, if it's about me and Josh moving out, I'll find us somewhere to live as soon as I can. It's for the best, Bev. You can't stay here. Not now. Yeah, well, we wouldn't want to put any unnecessary strain on your heart, would we? Look, I'm not proud of what I did. Exaggerating about being ill was lousy. But you've got to admit, you haven't exactly been a saint yourself lately, have you? Maybe not, but I wouldn't lie about something like that. You had me worried sick, Ron. Yeah, well, I am sorry. Anthea? Hello, Ron. Look, I've got to go. Josh, I'm coming now. She's still here, then? Yeah, but only till she finds somewhere else. Are you coming in? I don't even know what I'm doing here. I vowed I'd never speak to you again. Oh, please, Anth, just let me try and explain things. Okay. If yeah, fine. See ya. Here. What's that? What time are you going to see Luke? Uh, one o'clock. But we've got to see that Mr. Carden first. If he does his job properly, then Luke should be home soon. 
I hope so. Neve, it's OK if Killer comes home for the dinner when she's back at school, isn't it? No, it isn't, Dad. I've already paid for her school dinners for next week. Well, I want to start coming home. Well, you can't. It won't do any harm. She's been getting a hard time off some of the other kids in the yard. You know, because of Luke. Why didn't you say, love? Has someone been bullying you? No, keep out of it, Matt. I told you I didn't want to say anything. Look, it's nothing. I can deal with it. I just don't want to stay for dinners. Well, come home until things settle down. Thanks. I'm going to get off to the library now. And don't forget, no going to the parade on your way back, OK? I don't want you bumping into that Tim. You have to steer clear of him, do you hear me? Yeah. I'll see you later. Bye. If you've gone by the time I get back down, give our look my best wishes. Yeah, we will. I'm starting to worry about Kelly. Well, she seemed fine. How can we seem to attract so much trouble? So, how did your birthday night out with the lovely Jongo? Oh, it was great. We went into town, then ran Matthew Street, then to the Golden Gate for the Chinese. Look at you. Fancy copying for a fella at Ron's wedding. I know. It's about the only good thing to come out of that day. But anyway, I don't care. He's lovely. He's really funny, you know, and dead clever. So what's his body like, then? Is he dead for a while? Um, what do you think I am? I've only been out with him twice. You can ask me tomorrow morning. You're not, are you? Well, I reckon he's just as keen as me, so if things carry on the way they are, you never know. So how come he can afford all these nights out? I thought he only went to uni. Oh, he does, but he's got a job as well. So what does he do? He works at some club. We're going to it tonight, actually. Yeah. I'm seeing Mike tonight. So, what's been going on with you two? Nothing much. We're getting them fine, though. Is that his voice I had last night when you got in from work? Yes, he came in for a coffee. Oh, you didn't stay for breakfast, then? No, of course not. But, um, I think he might be doing soon. Your John's not the only one who's about to get lucky. <gasps> I was phoning you all day. I call round, I left messages, everything. You were the last person I wanted to speak to. I still can't believe what you did. And with her? Anthea, you don't know how sorry I am, love. I just don't know what came over me. I do. Bev, she was obviously out to get you back from the start. Why couldn't you see that? As soon as it happened, I realised how much of a mistake I'd made, but by then it was too late. So it only happened the once, then? Just the once, love, honestly. And after that, all I could think about was how hurt you'd be if you ever found out. Hurt? Devastated, more like. Not to mention totally humiliated. She must be really pleased with herself. She's done her utmost to try and split us up. And it looks like she's succeeded. Yeah, well, I'm not sure I'm ready to let her get away with it. What are you saying? I'm not prepared to let her spoil my happiness. Are you saying that you're thinking to give me another chance? I don't know. I'd never be able to fully forgive you for what happened. Anthea, I realise that, love. But I know that I could make you happy again. Just let me. Please. All the details are on there, along with our extensive menu and some other interesting facts. Hey, what do you think facts. you're doing? Like, I bet you didn't know that Charles Dickens' favourite food was chips. Hey, I'm talking to you. I'm on the note leaflets. It's National Chip Week. Yeah, well, it's not National Bug Our Customers Week. Now, go and get them out outside the chippy and stop trying to poach our customers off us. Didn't do any harm. No one can see us. I'm all right here, thanks. You don't think I'm some kind of perv, do you? Well, after what you did to me the other night, I don't know, do I? I didn't mean any harm. Just wanted to get you relaxed, that's all. So you got me blind drunk? What were you going to do, eh? Same as the rapist did to Nicky Shadwick? No, I'm not like that. I just wanted to kiss you, that's all. That's what you say, isn't it? No, honest. I swear. Look, I'm going to have to go. If I'm seen talking to you, they'll kill us both. So, do you believe me or what? Yeah. How come you're delivering them? Oh, well, it's a good scarf. Get out the chippy all day and also get paid for it. Mick's gonna box me off for every one of these that gets brought back. So I reckon if I deliver a few, I can sort me out with hey. a few Bob Goodnight. So, Rag, what have you been told about Bug and R. Kelly? We wasn't, we were just... Get off me. You've been told to leave it alone. We were just talking. 
What do you think? You're flying us. He's been bugging our Kelly. He wasn't, Grandad. He's all right, really. Got your bladder. You don't know what he would have done to you. Do you want to have your life ruined like that Nicky Shadwick? Because of my charge and my age, I'm considered a vulnerable prisoner. What does that mean? It's for people who are in danger of being attacked. Oh, my son. You mean, like, sex offenders? People like that. But you're no sex offender. Don't you think I've tried telling them that? They won't listen. Everybody in here reckons they're innocent. But you are. What's Carlton doing about you being treated like a nonce? I've already spoken to him. He reckons I'm better off being a VP. I get a cell to myself. <sighs> Anthea, please, love. You don't know how much you mean to me. Not enough to stop you sleeping with Bev, though. You said yourself that you didn't want her to spoil your happiness, so don't let her, then. Can we try again? Oh, please, love. If you say yes, I'll make sure that you never regret it. If I did, things would have to change. Whatever you say, just, just say the word, anything. You're going to have to do something about that tart. I will. But I know how much Josh means to you, and I'd never ask you to put him out of your life for me, but she can't carry on ruining things. I'll make sure she doesn't. Maybe you should try and come to some sort of arrangement with her. See if she'll agree to let you see Josh regularly. It would be in her own interests. I will love, I promise you. Does that mean we're back on? But we'll take it slower this time. No rushing into things head first. Let's see how we get on. Thanks, love. <laughs> you don't know how happy you've made me. I really missed you, you know. The thought of losing you was killing me. Listen, why don't we go out somewhere posh for our lunch, you know, celebrating style? I'm not in the mood for celebrating. You've really hurt me, Ron. I'm prepared to give it another go. But you won't get another chance after this one. I know that. Why don't you put the kettle on and I'll make a start on that mountain of paperwork over there. It looks like great grannies have been missing me too. Okay. That man was grave. He's just a divvy. <laughs> He's right though, isn't he? My life is ruined. I can't stop thinking about what's happened. I can't eat or sleep. I'm going mad. Imagine you go back to counselling. <sighs> the thought of having to sit there and talk it through all over again just knocks me sick. If it doesn't help, you can just stop going. But at least go back and give it a try. Well, Diane, you know, from the family support unit. She said I should think about going to see the counter at uni. Then why don't you? Hello, Nick. I dropped your mum and Emily off in town. Hi, Trine. Hiya. Hey, your mum wants us to meet you later on in China, Sam. What do you reckon? What's up, love? Nothing. I just got upset. Why is she upset? We have heard Matt Musgrave mouthing off, going on about Nicky. Right, that's it. I've had enough of them. No, stop it! Don't you realise that you kicking off all the time is one of the reasons I'm in this state? But Nicky, love... It's me that's been raped, but you're acting as if it's just some big insult to you. All you're interested in is getting revenge and making sure you sort everyone out. Well, none of it helps. It just makes things worse. So just leave me alone. <laughs> it's OK. It should be all right. I'm sorry, love. <laughs> I'm going out, so I won't be long. All the other details are on there, along with our extensive menu and some other interesting facts about chips. Like, did you know that the first ever chip shop was a wooden hut near Oldham in the 1860s? Oh, really? Yeah, um, I'd better go. Oh, well, well, I'll make sure I read it thoroughly. Hi. Um, I just thought I'd... Um... Uh, come in. What's the matter? Sorry, Nicky. Um, I just don't know what to do for the best anymore. Why? What's happened? I just can't help. It's my little girl. I can't do anything for her. I've really let her down. They might be able to get the bail decision overturned. What kind of evidence? It's just Nicky's word against mine. 
She said she saw me in some kind of weird flashback. I mean, how is that enough to keep me in here? Yeah, I know, boy. But look on the bright side. No court is going to convict you on the strength of the girl seeing things. It's a disgrace. I mean, they can't find you guilty because of someone's overactive imagination. I hope not. I couldn't handle prison. It's bad enough now, but the thought of being locked up for much longer really scares me. Is your business now, please? Right, we better go. Say how you're terrible for me. We will. <laughs> I'll see you soon. Take care. Ah, <laughs> oh, cheers. I'm really sorry about that. Oh, don't worry. It's obviously all the stress you've been under. I haven't cried like that since I was a kid. <laughs> It'll do you good. I knew there was something up this morning. You looked lost. That's how I feel sometimes. I'm oh, sorry. You shouldn't have to sit here listening to all my troubles. I don't mind, honestly. But I really think you should talk it through with Margie and Nicky. Yeah, I don't know. Are you sure you don't want to go out somewhere tonight? I'm not in the mood. I'm sorry. It's just I'm made up, you know, you may be the happiest man alive. Oh, good. But just remember, you made me the unhappiest woman alive. And it'll take me time to get over it. Yeah. Come on, Josh. Oh, yeah. Ron, will you take Josh somewhere while me and Bev have a little talk, please? Well, yeah, but... Don't worry. We're not going to start scratching each other's eyes out. I just want to talk to her. Is that all right with you? Don't know what you want to talk to me about. Right, well, I'll, uh, I'll go and see our Michael. Come on, Josh. Go see your Uncle Mike, eh? Surprised to see me, Bev. Not really, no. Well, despite your best efforts to ruin things for us, Ron and I are back together again, and this time it's for good. You might want to blame me for everything, but I didn't force Ron to sleep with me. I'm not kidding myself. He knew what he was doing, but I've decided to forgive him and give him another chance. If things are going to work out for us, I know I've got to accept the fact that Josh is part of Ron's life, and that means you are too. So I think we need to talk things through. If that's what you want. should be here by now. Stop panicking. You're only just ready. So, we decide whether you're gonna ask Mike to stay the night? I'm gonna wait and see how things go. Well, you've got the flat to yourself, so we might not have to stay over. Yeah, but if it does happen, I want to spend the night with him. Mm. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Same to you. I think we need to sort this out to the defence hall first. We're just as vulnerable down the left, though. Hi, yeah. Hi, yeah. You ready? Yeah. You look really lovely. Well, oh, thanks. I'll see you later. See ya. Have a nice night. Listen, if you make season tickets, ever go and spare. Give us a show, John, yeah? Yeah, will do. I never heard you say that I look lovely. Oh, that's because you always look lovely. I'm gonna let you off, then. What was John saying? Not much, really. He seemed a bit nervous. I mean, it's not like it's the first date, is it? They've been out since the wedding that never was. Mm -hmm. Maybe he knows that tonight's the night. You girls tell each other everything, don't you? Oh, and lads don't. Well, not like you. He's a weird. So what do you want to do tonight? you want to go down the bar for a drink or something? Well, we spent enough time at the bar. I thought we could stay in. Yeah. Got some wine in the fridge. Sounds good to me. Right. I'll open a bottle then. Checking Katie aren't going to be back till late, so we've got the flat all to ourselves. I am not having you telling me what's best for my son. I shouldn't have to. Just do what's right for him. Oh, I will. Don't worry, but I'm not having you running my life. I'm not interested in you or your life. So, why are you talking to me like I'm some kind of kid? Because you act like one most of the time. And I also think that one of the reasons you went after Ron is because you see him as some kind of father figure. You don't know what you're talking about. You know nothing about me. I know that before Ron, you had someone else who was a lot older than you. Who I go out with is none of your business, and neither is how I live my life. It is if it involves Ron. I don't want you messing things up for us again. And I don't want you running me life for me. I think I'd rather just go away. Even if it means Josh not seeing Ron again, at least I wouldn't have you interfering. I am not being told what to do by anyone, especially you. No, Dad, it's all right, so I've got it. Hiya. Hiya, team. 
Oh, Jason's fast asleep in front of the telly and me. Oh, great. How are you feeling now? All right, listen, thanks a lot for the savvy. It's OK, I didn't do anything. Yes, you did, you really helped. I've had a talk with mum and dad and I've decided I'm going to start up the counselling again. The first session's on next week. Oh, well done, that's just brilliant news. <laughs> thanks. I'm better going to see Sleeping Beauty then. Hello? Yeah, hi, Tina, how's things? What time did Matt say he'd be back? He never. You're not going to have a go at him over this afternoon, are you? I wish I'd mentioned it now. I don't want him causing any more trouble, as if we haven't had enough bother with the neighbours already. Is everything OK? That was Tina. Mr Rivers wants to see me about my new post. You're being promoted, Gil? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it that, Dad. Uh, right, Kelly, could you get upstairs and get your homework done, love? You're back to school on Monday. Mum. Come on, love. I'll give you a hand. Thanks, Dad. What are you going to do about Rivers? I just don't know. The last thing we need right now is me losing my job. I'm sure that won't happen. It'll be OK, love. You'll see. Yeah, but I'm tired, Joey. I'm sick of all the... the pretense and the lies. I've had enough. You know, with, with everything else going on with Luke and the house, it suddenly just put everything into perspective. I don't know how much longer I can keep covering this up. All right, love. Don't get yourself into a stage. I've never been here before. It's okay. Wouldn't drink here all the time, but it's okay for the laugh now and again. So, is the knocked on tonight? Yeah. I'm not sure what though. I'll go and find out what it is. It won't be a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Are you OK? Yeah, you. Yeah, great. Do you want to tap up? Yeah, please. Oh, then, what are you trying to do? Get me drunk? No, oh, I should have. Somebody's up. Sorry. Yeah, come here. Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry about that. I'll wipe it no, up. No, it's all right. It'll dry. I wasn't watching it anyway. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. Who's that? Just ignore it. Oh, it might be someone from the bar. There might be a problem. All right, then I'll get the door. You get a cloth for the wine, OK? OK. Did you know that fish and chips were the only food not to be rationed during the Second World War? Well, you're not still going on about that, are you? Yeah, but it's our National Fish and Chippy Cliffet. There's loads of other interesting facts in there. Along, if you take this down to the chippy... Oh. What did Tim want? He's giving away leaflets on cheap chips or something. Shall I get some more wine from downstairs? No, I'm OK. Oh, I'll have to give this stain on the carpet proper scrub. It's worse than I thought. How was Alu? Yeah, it was OK, love. He's hopeful his appeal for bail will come through. Oh, sounds. Can I go and see him soon? It's probably better you don't. I don't think he'd want you to see him in there. Why were you fighting with that fella from across the road this afternoon? The little blades. You won't leave our Kelly alone. Yeah, well, you keep out of it. Can't even look after my own little sister now. Look, will you stop it, both of you, please? Get out of my sight. <sighs> You're just as bad as them, Joey. All that ever happens around this family is trouble followed by more trouble. I can't stand much more of it. Well, how do you think I feel? I'm trying to do my best, but I can't seem to do anything right. Yeah, well, losing your temper doesn't help. It just makes matters worse. God, this family's falling apart. Luke's in prison. God knows what the other two are up to. Now even Kelly's starting to attract trouble. You're not blaming it all on me, are you? No, I just want you to try and help me sort it out. I can't cope. Now with this business at work, I'm really worried about what's going to happen to us. If I lose that job, then we really are in trouble. 
Kelly's finished wrong with, will you check it for her? It's statistics. Uh, I had a go, but I can't make head in the tail of it. You might have a better idea than me. Yeah, I'll do it later, Dad. Go on, it's only that page. She wants to know if she's on the right track. Not now, OK? Here, give it to me. I usually do her homework for no, you're all right. Aunt Eve can do it. Go ahead, love. No, I can't, Dad. All right, no need to bite me head off. I'm only trying to help Kelly, but everything that's been going on, she's starting to feel left out. Yeah, look, I'm sorry, OK? It's just been one of those days. It's always one of those days with this family. Can't you spend a bit of time on your daughter? Go on. Look, will you just drop it and mind your own... Oi! Dad, look, I could really do with a wee bit of support right now, OK? So just don't start, please. What's going on, Neve? Is there something you're keeping from me? No, of course not. I know there is. I'm not stupid. You find me out for asking to look over this. What's going on? I'm sorry. No, that's not good enough. I want to know what's going on. OK, if you really want to know, on top of everything else, I'm in danger of losing my job. But, but why have you been there for years? You're up for promotion, aren't you? Yes. Look, for God's sake, will you just tell him, will you? Tell me what? It isn't that I didn't want to read Kelly's homework. It's that I can't. What do you mean? I can't read. At least, not properly, anyway. You what? All these years, I've... I've struggled to get by without being able to read or write. Yeah, I know it sounds mad, but I've, I've just managed to get by, even at work. I've done a good job, but I've done it without being able to read. And without being found out. But, but, but how come? You're always done so well at work. Yeah, I've done OK, but now it's all going to change. How do you mean? I can't do it anymore. It's all over. No, you don't. You've got ages yet. There's the kids who want the breakfast. The kids are old enough to manage on their own. <laughs> I don't think so. And you're not in wait till two, are you? No. I suppose let's sleep in won't do any harm. What are you up to, Stay? I'm buying a load of gear for that plumber job next door. Oh, Susanna Farnham's. Morrissey, she's changed the name, remember? I said I'd start a week ago. Yeah, you said you'd start out after six months ago. She's got your plague, that one. You charging her to go and race? Of course I am. What are you asking me that for? Cos I know you, you're a soft touch. Women like her can wrap you around the little fingers. Don't be soft. Oh, Greg, your hands are freezing. You warm them up, then. Greg, stop it. Come here. Oh, the kids lay at us. So, we're married, aren't we? Greg. Oh, come on, Mark, it's been ages. I know, but not now, OK? When? Well, I don't know. No, Nicky's back on a day for Keel. I mean, it doesn't seem right to us in here enjoying ourselves while she's out there trying to get her life back together. We can't go on like this forever, you know. I know, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, forget it. I'll put the kettle on. Me mum! I know. I can't get my head around it myself, look. Of course she can read. But well, that's what I thought. But, but from what I can make out, it looks like she's been having a few problems. Problems like what? I don't know. She got a bit upset last night and, and everything came out and... I said I'd have a word with you. Oh, my mum can read. I know she can. I've seen her. Well, maybe it's not that she can't read, full stop. 
Maybe she's just a little bit slow. She's not slow. She's dead brainy. Don't get upset, love. I'm only repeating what you told me yourself. You're trying to make out like she's thick or something, aren't you? No, no, I'm not, love. Yes, you are. Kelly, your granddad's telling the truth. I do have a few problems with reading and writing and stuff I always have had. I've just done a good job in covering them up all these years. Gemma, how many more times? You're going to be late. Hang on, just on the phone. <sighs> Flippin' now, Mick. Are you trying to wake the dead or what? On the phone this time of the morning. Anything else you on the phone to? Do you want a cuppa? I haven't got time. I'm not going to be late. Morning. Hi, Sam. Who are you on the phone to? Pippa. Pippa, I thought you weren't getting on. God, Dad, that was ages ago. She's phoning me about hamster babies. Ah, oh, God. And uh, before you say it, no. Oh, but, Dad, they're old enough to leave the mum now. Ah, oh, don't be tight. Little Lammy hamster, that'll be top, Dad. Oh, and who's going to take care of it? Clean the cage out and all that? Ah, oh, but, Dad, it'll do for me next birthday and Christmas. Yeah, I've heard all that before and all. But I've told her I'll have one now. You'll just have to untell her, won't you? But they're all going to be drowned if nobody takes them. You're joking, aren't you? Yeah. But even if they're not... Pippa will find plenty of takers in school. Girls who live in big houses where hamster cages won't get in the way and stink the place out. Now, come on, you're going to be late. Let's get in the car. All right, I'm gone. I forgot my geography file. We'll be a sack. Oh, give me strength. Morning. All right, mate. Here we go, all right. Yeah. Um, it's OK if you use the bag? Whatever. I just want to get a wash in there. I'm only be a minute. Yeah, well, make sure you clean up after yourself. I will, yeah. Um, do you want me to tidy down here as well? No, thanks. I don't want you hanging around here on your own. You afraid I'm going to rob something? Just stick to the garage and then we'll all be happy. It was a bit harsh, wasn't it? Don't you think the lad's been through enough? No more than he deserves. Oh, well, come on, Mick. He delivered them leaflets for you and everything last week. Sin, the lad's nothing to do with me. He's your responsibility. I mean, I've given him a job. I've let him live in my house. What more do you want? I want you to get off his back. And stop treating him like he's some kind of mass murderer. Come on, Gems, better get going. The lad's having a nightmare at the moment. He's getting it from all sides. See you soon. Ta ra, babe. But, Mum, I've seen you read loads of times. No, you haven't. I have? No, you've seen your dad read, Orion. They cover up for me. So you can't read anything? Not even that? No, please, love, not now. Can you read that? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, bits of it. Which bit? Does it matter? Why didn't you learn in school? I don't know, love. I suppose I should have done. I wasn't really there much. Well, that's all you ever say to me. Get into school, get your homework done. Yeah, maybe that's why, because I don't want you to turn out like me. So all them times you looked at my homework books, you didn't even know what I'd written? No, I can understand odd words. You were lying the whole time. Please, love, I don't really want to go through all this now. Could you just get your toast on you and get off to school? I don't believe it. I could have got away with all kinds. Anyway, at least now we all know, so we can start to do something about it. Like what? Get you on a course or something. I'm not going on any course. Don't you think I've got enough problems to contend with? You'll have to. You can't go through life without being able to read. I've managed so far. We'll sign you up on one of these adult education thingamajigs. I've seen posters up at the school. My school? There's nothing to be embarrassed about, love. I'm not. It's all right, Kelly. You don't need to worry. I won't be embarrassing anyone, including myself. I'm not going on any course. What time did she go out? I didn't hear the door. It was ages ago. Our Jason took her. Do you remember Pete his mum? Well, she could have said to her. I didn't tell you, did I? They want me to start training again. Did she say what time she'll be back in? No. They want me to start this week. You sure she was all right? Oh, I don't know. I think she said I had a cob on with my dad. A cob on, why? For beating Tim O'Leary up. Once and for all, I didn't beat anybody up, and I've already sorted that with our Nicky. Yeah, I think she's got a little bit heated, that's all. I feel ashamed. Everyone reckons he's off his head. Off my head? Did the lab was trying to get you drunk so you wouldn't know what you were doing? All right now, Craig. No, it's not all right. She wouldn't be saying that if she was in the same state as our Nicky. Craig? I didn't even have a drink. No, but you still went round here, though, didn't you? Will you stop shouting at it? It's not going to do anyone any good. God, I'm not a little kid, you know. It's got nothing to do with age. Our Nicky's 19. Oh, for God's sake, Nicky, Nicky, Nicky. Is that the only person you can talk about in this house? Um... I'm sick of him, Mum. Don't you care about anyone else? I've got problems too, you know. What? I mean, what problems? Oh, forget it. You're not bothered. Of course we're bothered, aren't we? You've never once asked me about running. Not once. For your information, I missed the train and camp in Lanzarote. Never made the team for the regional championships. <sighs> not that you care. And now they're asking me to start all over again. Oh, Em, um, of course we care. You know we do. God, we care like mad, don't we? Yeah. I mean, we've never been so proud of you. You know, getting to this level, making the county team. 
Oh, please don't think we're not bothered, babe, because we are, aren't we? We tell her, Greg. Oh, where's me pit? And it's not too late to start us again. We'd love you to make that team. We really would. You know that. Forget it, Mum. I'm not interested. Save your sympathy for our Nicky. For God's sake, have you been struck dumb? Why didn't you say anything or back me up? Like what? Well, I don't know anything just to show the girl we were thinking about, say. What's the point? I can't do right for doing wrong these days. So in future, I'm not going to say anything. I'll leave all that to you. Emily? Emily? Oh, hang on, will you? What? Just wait a minute. I want to apologise. What for? About what happened the other week. You know, getting used to drunk and that. I've already said sorry to Kelly, haven't I? Yeah, he has. You've got a cheek. You take us back to your minty garage to get us drunk so you can get your leg over. And you reckon a simple little sorry's gonna make it all better? Don't think so. Oh, come on, Em, don't be tight. He means it. Oh, forget it. You can't win me over that easily. Everyone's got me all wrong. I didn't even do anything, did I? No, we never, honest. Oh, not much. Just put off a bottle of vodka in the lager, hey. eh? Oh, God, Emily. I'm your dad. Better get off. What are you doing hanging out with these? Oh, leave me alone. Come here, I'm talking to you. Where do you think you're going? Keep away from my daughter, right? But I haven't done anything. Hey, what's going on? I'm just having a little word in his ear. I don't want you anywhere near our Emily or Nicky, right? And I'm not going to tell you again. Well, what's he done? Nothing. Yeah, well, just make sure it stays that way. Flaming hell, Tim. What are you playing at? Are you totally stupid or what? I haven't done anything. You know you're not supposed to go anywhere near them girls, especially after everything that's happened. Why? What do you think you're going to do? Rape one of them? Oh, don't be stupid. Well, that's what everyone else around here seems to think. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. They've got me down as the Yorkshire Ripper of Manor Park. Some type of egg case. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of everyone hating me. Morning. I should I say afternoon? Time is it? Late. You on your own under there? Katie, could you turn the light off? Shouldn't you be at work? No, I've got a day off. Where's lover boy? Not here. What happened to John? <sighs> Not much. Didn't he come back? Thought you were gonna rip all his clothes off in a mad passionate frenzy. Didn't get the chance. Got his kit off before I went anywhere near him. Well, hey. Not quite. It's in the club we went to. He's a male stripper. No. So a man I didn't exactly go off with a bang. I was yours. Turned out pretty much the same by the sounds of it. What? Mike's living a secret life in a sex club? No, it just... I don't know. Nothing happened. After all that planning, why not? Seeing that everything that could go wrong did go wrong. It was a nightmare. This this morning's? Yeah. Shall I get through then, shall I? If you like. A couple of politicians there, saying that they're Kelly. Something from easy luck. Where? Looks official. Do you want me to open it? No, leave them for Joey. He'll go through them later. He's in charge of all the bills then, is he? Always has been. Why doesn't that surprise me? What's that supposed to mean? Well, if you're leaving it to the other fella to pay all the bills and renew insurance policies and all that kind of palaver, it's no wonder you're homeless. Leave Joey out of this, Dad, please. I don't see how I can. Not if he's known all these years and never done anything about it. Actually, Joey's the one who's kept me sane over the last 20 years. Kept you ignorant, more like. Ignorant? You know what I mean. Yeah. That I'm the village idiot, the dunce in the corner who can't even spell her own name. All I'm saying is he should have helped you instead of holding you back. He hasn't held me back. Of course he has. He's made you totally reliant on him. Yeah, well, you should take a long, hard look at yourself before you start blaming Joey. Me? Yeah, you. I knew nothing about it. No, and that's the shame of it. My own father couldn't care less if I knew my ABCs or not. Hang on. It's not that I didn't care. I didn't know. No, well, you should have known. You should have made it your business to find out. Then maybe I wouldn't be in the position I'm in now. So we didn't even make a move? Oh, yeah, kind of. We both did. So, what happened? Well, first off, he spilt the wine and then Tim O'Leary knocked to the door and interrupted us. Foiled at every turn. Yeah. But it wasn't just that. It's like we're, I don't know, both dead shy with each other. 
Shy? You're talking about the same person here. Mike, Mr. Anytime, any place, anywhere, Dixon. It's just dead awkward. Would you want to sleep with him, Mike? Yeah, of course I do. Then what's stopping you? Just go for it. No, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, what if he thinks I'm some kind of sex fiend? Get lost. You'd be made up. No, I won't feel comfortable just diving on him. Not the way things are at the moment. I can't get my head round it. You always seem like you get on dead well. We do. It's just this sex thing. Oh, to be honest with you, I think he thinks I've got all kinds of hang-ups. You know, because of everything that's happened in the past. I think he's scared of pushing me in case I get upset or something. But you've been out with loads of people since Christian. You went out with Bruno for a while and then you and... Oh, no, but it's different with Mike. It's... it's dead hard. Why? Because I really like him. More than any other bloke that I've ever been out with. Then talk to him. Tell him you feel like you're ready. And if that's what he wants to, then... Hmm. I'm gonna have to do, Anna. Neve, look, I'm sorry about that before. I can't get my head around all this. It, it's hard to take in. Wasn't well, exactly easy for me either, having my my deepest, darkest secrets exposed like that. And um, what you were saying, you know, about me, about me not caring. It isn't true, you know. Honest to God, it isn't. Like I told you, I had no idea if I'd have known about it, even suspected there was something wrong. I'd have done something about it, you know, but I'd have got you some help. I don't used to look back and think that it was all my fault. I think we see my childhood in very different lights, Dad. But me and your mum, you, you know we always tried our best for you. Early on, yeah. But then she died and it all fell apart. It was like me and the lads didn't even exist anymore. Things weren't that bad, love. <laughs> weren't they? I spent my school years shopping, cooking and skivvying after a father and two brothers. Time I should have spent getting myself an education. But you, you were so busy stewing in your own self-pity, wallowing in bed day after day. It was like you were the only man who'd ever been widowed. You just didn't think twice about us. You left us to fend for ourselves. I was totally out of it, Neve. Distraught. I lost your mother when she was 34 years old. But talking about my wife, she meant everything to me. I know you lost a wife, but I lost a mum at an age when I needed her more than ever before. You didn't have the sole monopoly on grief, Dad. We were all devastated. You just didn't see it. It was like you were too wrapped up in your own little tragedy to care. All right, mate, your Gemma's been on the phone again about the hamster. Wants to know if there's any chance. Winter. He's in the garage. Why is everything all right? I just want a word with him. What the hell's going on? What? What are you doing harassing Emily Shadwick? Hasn't she been through enough with what happened to her sister without you hanging around her no? I haven't harassed anyone. Well, that's not what her dad's just told me. Look, I haven't even done anything. I only went over there to apologise. She did, Mick. Well, why am I getting the neighbours stopping me in the street complaining about you? Eh? I'm sick of it, I am. I'm beginning to regret ever letting you move in here. Yeah. Yeah, because you've been nothing but trouble since day one. And if it wasn't for Simba. You'd what? You throw me out, eh? Cos the way I'm feeling right now, you know what? That'd shoot me right down to the ground. Hey, hang on, Tim. No, I won't hang on. I've had enough of this. I'm sick of being accused of things I haven't even done. What are you doing? Getting off. Oh, don't be stupid. You've got nowhere to go. Yeah, I have. Me Mars, me Auntie Angie's. Anywhere's better than this place. Come on, Mick. I just let him go. So, Tim, I'm not gonna stop him. Tim, think about what you're doing, will you? This is mad. Get off and going. I'm sick of being treated like some sort of leper. The things I've done for you over the past few months. I've worked myself into the ground and you couldn't give a toss. I've walked around the streets delivering those little crappy leaflets, working all these mad hours when you couldn't even get in yourself. In fact, you wouldn't even have a chip if it wasn't for me. I stopped the place from going up in smoke, if you remember. And what thanks did they get, eh? Apart from nearly getting a sack. All you've ever done is go on at me. And I'm sick of it. I've had enough. Come on, Tim. Think about what you're doing, will you? I have. And I've realised that trying to do the right thing is just a waste of time. I'd be better off on the rob, lifting cars or whatever. That's what everyone thinks I'm doing anyway. Tim. Then I'll give you a ring about getting the rest of my stuff. Hang on, mate. Was that it, then? Just going to let him walk away? I never asked him to leave. No, but you did nothing to stop him either, did you? I'm going to get after him and sort him up with some dosh. It's the least I can do under the circumstances. Hey, hang on, sir. I don't think you should go chasing after him. He's almost me. No. I'll go. You won't have got too far. 
Greg, is that you? What's the matter being our Nicky? Disappointed. Going off to work soon. I suppose you'll be late tonight, will you? <sighs> Probably. Oh, by the way, you starting this job in Susanna's today or not? No, I've just been over there. There's no one in. I was just thinking maybe you could do one of the million jobs that need doing around here. Oh, I, uh, God forbid I should put my feet up for five minutes. So, where are you going to go? Like I say, my Mars probably. Be a bit push for space there, won't it? And there'll be you, your mum, Ben, Melanie, all crammed into a little two-bedroom flat. Well, I've got nowhere else to go, have I? Look, Tim, I know me and you haven't exactly hit her off in the past. But to be honest, I think there were times there when you were bang out of order. But, well, I don't know. Maybe this isn't one of them. Some of what you said before made a lot of sense. You're right. I have been taking you for granted. Anyway, I can't stop you going, not if you really want to. I mean, you're a big enough lad now to make up your own mind. But I don't want you to leave because of something I said in the heat of the moment. You're a good worker, lad. And to be honest, I don't want to lose you. Anyway, it's up to you. Let me know if you change your mind. Mick! Hang on. Don't lose you either. Get out of it. <laughs> Look at her. Always was lovely looking. The spit of our Luke. I think he looks more like her than any of them. I wonder what she'd have made of this lot. Luke in prison, us losing the house. Ah, yeah, she'd have soon sorted it out. That was the sort of woman she was. I want to make her up to your love. Forget it. What's done's done. There's no point in going over it all now. Oh, please, hey, let me do for you now what I should have done then. Help you learn. It's too late. I'm past all that now. There's nothing anyone can do. I'm teaching myself of a new help. <sighs> please, Dad, I've got enough on my plate. Don't make things worse. OK, whatever you say. Although there is something you could do for Joey. Like what? Put in a good word for him at work. What? He needs a job. Look, I know how you feel about him, but we're desperate, absolutely desperate. If I lose my job tomorrow, that's it. We've no more income. I can't, love. Why not? He's a hard worker. Look, he held down two jobs for God knows how long. I can't risk it. But he'd do a good job. I know he would. No, he'll do exactly what he did when you got him working in your place. Mess it up, forget to turn in. The man is work shy. Please, Dad, don't make me beg you. If it were you or Kelly, one of the lads, yeah, you know I wouldn't hesitate. But Joey, I'm sorry, love, I, I just can't do it. So you're going back to yours? Yeah. So you're not going to call into the chippy then? Oh, ha ha. You want your dad testing chasing after him? He's chasing after me, actually. Did you hear about my dad beating him up the other day? Yeah, so did our Matt. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah, everyone's carrying on. Mum and Dad's a hype pal. Do you know what happened with our Nicky and everything? I mean, it's like they can't talk about anything else. It's the same in our house. It's like the rest of us don't exist. I tried to tell him about Roger Abbott making me run again this morning. What did he say? He didn't want to know. I know you could get out of running. How? Put your names out for the school play. What play? Haven't you seen Mr Corkle putting the posters up? He said there's going to be loads of rehearsals. There's no way you could do both. I can't act. So? Do the scenery or something? Or the lights? Do you reckon? Yeah, I'm doing it. I'm going to go for one of the main parts. I suppose so. Anything's worth a try. So are you going to go home first or shall I? I'm going to hang on a minute. Wait until the coast's clear. All right then. See you later then. See you later. all that stuff on the carpets. No one else for it to go. No, never is, is there? What's going on? Nothing. Nothing? We've hardly got a civil word to say to each other. I suppose that's my fault and all, is it? What? I'm fed up getting the blame for everything that goes wrong round here. Is this all because I asked you to do a few jobs around the house? I think it goes a bit deeper than that, don't you? What's that meant to me? You mean I'm sending on any shells scared to speak out of tea in case I say the wrong thing? What are you talking about, Greg? Half the time I feel like you don't even like me. Of course I like you. 
You're my husband, aren't you? Yeah, well, it didn't seem like that this morning. Oh. So that's what all this is about. Yeah, it is, amongst other things. I don't like being made to feel like some kind of animal just because I want to get close to my own wife. Look, I explained about that. Oh, Nicky was in. These walls are like cardboard. She demands every sound. I'm not talking about our Nicky. I'm talking about the way things are between us. We can't even have a laugh anymore. A laugh? After what's been going I'm on? I'm sick of not being able to touch you without being made to feel guilty. Waiting for you to come home so we can spend the night together and ending up on me own because you're having yet another late night at work. Is that all you can think about, eh? Number one? Do you know what? You're unbelievable. I mean, our daughter's been... She's been raped. And all you can go on about is how often you get your leg over. Don't say that, man. Don't you dare say that. No, you're just like the rest of them. After one thing and one thing only. Don't try and compare me with that bloody animal. No, all you can do is think about yourself. So what are you saying? You don't want to be married to me anymore? I don't know. I just know I'm fed up of all the arguing and all the sly little digs. It's not what I want out of me marriage, Greg. And I'm telling you, if you don't get things back on track and sort things out, you might turn round and find you just won't be here anymore. Next on Forum, the first of a brand new series, the cream of post-war motoring, Daimlers, Bentleys and Rollers, true classic British cars.